Okay, that was my next dissertation. Now, once you've got the club here, what's left? Body position. What do we do? Well, we get ourselves squared with the, <coughs> excuse me, with the target line or with the club face. Either way you want to do it. Now, what's squaring mean? It means that if the shoulders were level, it would be what in relation to the target line? Parallel. Parallel. They can't be parallel because one is lower than the other, but they will be on the same plane as your target line. Now, when you address the ball now, I want the club in the center between your feet, not over there, and not different for every club. Yes? Now, these positions, these uh, principles that you've been telling us, are these principles only for the full swing or for all swings? Any swing. For the golf swing. The golf swing. Be it made with a wedge, a driver, whatever. I do not change for any shot. And I'll show you later in my demonstration. If I hook or slice, I still use the same principle. If you're making a 40 or 50 uh, yard uh, wedge chip shot, uh, you don't open your stance or do anything like that, you stay the same. Well, you can open the stance if you want to, but that doesn't change the basic fundamentals. See, the, this is the important part, not the lower part. So you, you, can, you can have this like this and hit the ball dead straight because what? This is correct. Yeah, but, but now I can have this like this perfectly square here and be this way and I'll pull it. And if it's in the rough or something, you're not going to play it farther back? It depends on the lie. That's a special, that becomes a special shot then. Uh, See, when you're playing special shots, I move this thing all over the place, as I'll show you later. This is just for normal straight shots to a target, okay? We always start with that. What's but, the compensation that's made if, by the player who moves the ball to the left? To what do you mean moves it to the left? When you, when you draw it, you mean? No, that's just, you know, I would say you ask 95% of the people who play on tour, they're going to say they've got that ball to the left of center. Oh, they do. What's the compensation that they're making there? No real compensation. And what are they doing then? See, but they're, see, if you notice, they're, they're, their balance is a little different. See, if I set up this way, I can hit it dead straight too. I don't, I but don't it requires, well, I'm different. I set up differently. I'm not, I'm not, do I look balanced to you? No. See, that's the difference. See, I, it, by the way, when you hear me speak, remember, my whole premise is balance. Balance with the hands, balance with my setup, balance in relation to target line, everything's balanced. See, when I set up at the ball, now, do I look balanced? It looks like. Okay, yes. Now, if I move over there, I gotta be this. You see, I still have to keep this on the same plane. Because in a lot of times when people put the ball forward, they put it forward this way, and now they're left. So see? They, they're, if I understand what you're saying, they're moving a lot of their weight to the right. Even. Say that again? They're moving their balance point even back. Yes, to the left. To the left. To the left. Not right. to the right. Okay. To the left. And that's what you've got to do if you move the ball around and you want to hit it straight. See? Okay. So you place yourself so you're square with the target line, which means that the shoulders, would, would, if they were level, would be parallel. Now, why do I believe that all clubs should be placed in the center? And that making difference whether it's a, a bunker shot, even though in a bunker shot I put the ball a little bit forward or center, but I still put my club in the center when I swing. I don't change that. Well, because balance to me is balance, and if I'm imbalanced for with one club, I'm imbalanced with all clubs. It doesn't make any difference if I take the club from here and drop it. Where does it fall? Center. Dead center. If I drop the driver, where will it fall? Dead center. Now, with the club head being bigger in the driver, what will happen to the ball? It'll be slightly off to the left foot. You see? But you can always find your balance. Now, let me show you the benefit of this. Suppose that you get up one day and you feel kind of like a daisy call. And when you feel kind of lackadaisical and you're not going to hit the ball very far consciously, what, your, what does your stance look like? Does it look the same as when you're trying to hit it far? Narrow. It would be narrower, wouldn't it? Well, now, if I say to myself, okay, now i got to put this ball that close to my left foot, let's say, but now I have a narrower stance, now what do I do? Is it good? Suppose that on a day that I feel very strong, and when you feel very strong, what does your stance have a tendency to do? To widen. Now, am I going to stay there? Now what do I do? 
So you see, there's a tremendous amount of disparagement just because you, 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 your mind is always working with that ball someplace. But if I have put the club in the center of my stance, and that's my principle, does it make any difference whether I have a stance of this kind or this kind? Doesn't make one bit of difference. Now, when you change the ball around, the direction of departure from the ball is always different. Now, when we're trying to play golf, what's the one thing that you would like to be? Yes. <laughs> Pardon? What? Consistent. See? Consistent. Well, now, how can you be consistent when, when you take the club back, one goes up that way, and then the other one goes back in this way? Can you be consistent? You can't. But it doesn't make any difference. Whether you have an open stance, the club is in the center. You're trying to play a wedge shot, club is in the center. You play a driver, club is in the center. Every departure direction from the ball is what? Identical. Yes, sir. Now, putting is a little different. Now, I putt this way. Everything's in the center. Okay? I don't teach putting in the center. I start everybody in the center, especially when I'm pitching with beginners. But I have no objection to this because, you see, the body does not get involved in putting, does it? So it really doesn't make any difference where you put the ball. <laughs> see, if you have it, the only thing that I require is that if you're putting with the ball off center to either direction, it doesn't make any difference. If you would drop a vertical line from your center, it must fall where your putter is supposed to be. So if I have the ball over there, I can't keep my balance line here, can I? I have to move it laterally until I'm there. And if I put the ball that far, my weight has to be there because that's where I'm going to be able to keep my shoulders square with the target line. Okay? If I do it from here, my shoulders will turn, yes. The ball must be where the center is, or the club? The club, the putter, the putter. So you always, where the putter falls, that's where your weight pattern should be, okay? Now, if you want it to play off the right foot, the same thing, you've got to keep your weight so that falls right there. And it doesn't really make much difference. So, in other words, you can put the ball anywhere you want. As long as you abide by that principle. If it's further up towards your left foot, you'd have, you'd have your weight further left. Yes, sir. If you want it on the right foot for whatever reason, then you put it off the left foot. So your, your center of gravity or your weight is directly over the ball? Not over the ball. Over the putter head. Over the putter head. Just like when I drop it from here, it's over my, my club head. It's not over my ball. Right, well, why do you so often hear that the longer the club, the more forward in your stance you should play? Oh, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I believe it, but that's yeah. what I've I know, heard. but this is the common sense I'm talking about. My good friend Tommy Armour, in his book and in his film, says you hit the irons down the woods up. You heard that? Sure. Well, the more you put the ball up there, the more what you hit it? Up. The more up you hit it. The more you put the ball back here, the more down you hit it. See, I don't want that. I want the ball to be hit to the target. I don't want the driver to be going up there, and neither do I want the 9-9 the, the, the to be going to the ground. I'm trying to send the ball to the target, whether I have a wedge, a sand iron, a driver, five iron, it doesn't make a difference. My job is to get the ball over there. So my conscious feeling is that if I have the club here, I can hit this way better than if I'm over there. And you would find the same thing. Go ahead. But now, besides the, the aspect of up and down, what about the length of the club? Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Why do people always say that? Because everybody's trying to hit the ball further, and they, they claim that because you put the ball up there, you may hit it further. See, the point of, of contact is really not the fastest point of the swing. The fastest point is out here somewhere. See, if, you, if I swing this club, now tell me where the highest pitch is. Where's the sound the greatest? It's over here. By all rights, they should say, well, hit the ball over here. That's where you're getting the greatest speed. You can't do that. See? So they're trying to, by doing this, they're trying to get more speed. But you see what happens is not, not only do you get perhaps more speed, but you also get more distortion. Because it's, beg your pardon? No. It's after impact. Now, I'll tell you how you can prove it. And people argue with me all the time. In our schools in Milwaukee, we have arranged a, a camera picture taking procedure where we take the swing and have it printed in a Polaroid film. Okay, it's done in the dark. We put a light on the end of the shaft, of the, of, and we, we just print your swing. 
And the thinnest line is always over here. Without a ball there. Without a ball, or with a ball. Even with the ball? Yes. Now they claim that you lose 19% of the speed of the club head. See? Now, of course, we hit these duffel little, we don't take, we don't take, because if you hit one of these, you break the bulb. You the shock. What, impact? Yes, Nine, that's what Maltby says. Okay, but when you make a swing, it's always the thinnest point, thinnest line is always in this area. See? Now, uh, you can all tell in which direction do you get the greatest pull. When the, pull's, when, when the club is pulling the greatest, where is it pulling? Oh, yeah. well, wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be a reason almost, though, if the club is moving faster out there, wouldn't that almost be a reason for hitting the ball farther out there? They claim you do. I can't hit any further no matter what I do. I've reached my peak, so I can't hit any further whether I put it there or put it here. But see, he said that he wanted to be consistent. All right. Now, what good does it do you to get 10 more yards from here if you can only hit 10% on the fairway? But those those players, like for instance, who do play it up there and who are very consistent, though, uh, would they actually get more uh, power, more distance? I don't think they will. No, yeah. sir. I don't think so. I don't think that that is going to make that much difference. Uh, and if you take a look at some of the players. Today, the new breed, if you want to call it that, they're getting more centered than they ever have been. If you listen to Tommy Armour, you're going to gain 10% with your drive. But and you're going to lose it with your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come out even. Yeah. So, uh, I do not hit the ball further when I move it up a little bit than when I do right here. But I'm more crooked. I'm more crooked. Okay. Any questions about the setup and the address and so forth? Do you tell, do you tell them to try and swing it faster? Beg your pardon? Do you tell them to try and make more speed out here or is that just happening? Yes. Well, no, it, what I like to do when I try to get people that kind of, you know, kind of get lackadaisical and they don't maintain it, I just maintain the velocity until you're past the ball. That's what I tell them. Maintain your velocity until you, because many times, and many of you are guilty of it, once the ball is hit, that's it. See, now if you do that, then the maximum speed is over here. You haven't reached maximum speed yet. See. But it was interesting when we took those films, because I've always maintained that. And of course, if you, you, how many of you have Hogan's book or read it? You remember the picture that he has in his book where the driver is way up here like that? See, he kept, he, he's one of the professionals that kept the, the, uh, the speed going the longest. See, most of the fellows are, are here, see, but Hogan was way up there. He kept it really a long ways. They so, have some sequence uh, shots of Greg Norman. Uh, oh, he keeps it going. Oh, he really keeps it a long ways. Really I haven't seen any slow motion pictures. I haven't had a chance to, to watch him in detail, but uh, with the speed that he's got, he's got to keep Golf it. Golf Magazine did that frame by frame thing of him and boy, they showed him. Way up there. Way up. Sure. Sure. And the longer the hitter, the more they do that, the more they maintain the speed. Well, the more they maintain the speed, usually the faster it gets. And that in itself will create distance. That's correct. The more speed you maintain through. Right. You go back to uh, yeah. set up again. Sure. Okay, you line the, the club face up with the target line. Okay. okay. You're ready to go. Go ahead, get ready. You haven't made any any effort to line your feet, your body, your shoulders, or anything. Not that no. I just kind of feel myself square with my target line or my club head. I, I like to do it with my club head. Okay. Good. Just step back from the ball and take your grip like you were going to hit the ball again. Take okay. It. Like like my technique. Like like if I were going to hit a shot. shot okay. 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 So you just focused on that club face and your body is just falling into line. Right. You haven't made any effort to do this, or this, or No. Not at all. You look at the target and then you took your grip, is that right? Well, I see, I, my technique, I always put the club in front of the ball first. That's where I, where I do my homework. See, I look at my line, you see, and then I've got my line now, and I do this, and I put this club on that line, so to speak, okay? 
Now, you see, I'm kind of, there's my right angle situation, okay? Now, when I'm going to put it down behind the ball after I get my grip and feel comfortable with my grip, I look again. At the target. Yes, and then I put it, I realign it. Thought of getting those shoulders to no, parallel? no, not at all. No. You know why I, I don't worry about it? All right, come on over here. You said it was important. Yes, but come here. Very important. Okay, now you, you address that ball. Now I want you to be the judges over here. Now I want you to put your club so that the ball, behind the ball, but the ball is going to be towards your left foot. Maybe about three inches more than you normally do it. Than I normally would? Yeah. Okay. Now that club is in the center. Is that club in the center? Oh, the club. The black. No, yeah, I, I want you to put it over here. No, right here. What's happened to his shoulders? They've gone left, haven't they? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, what happens to the shoulders? Put your club down, please. Now, watch his shoulders. When I move this to the center, how are his shoulders now? Square. Back to square. That's why I don't worry about it. Because if I put this club in the center, there's no way I can be other than this. Okay, and so if I got it left, the tendency would be to open. Yes, unless. You cock. I validated that a million times. See? Yeah. If I get it forward, I'll get it left. Well, if you put your ball forward and you don't cock yeah, like no, that, you're set left. If it slides forward, it, it, it goes left. Yes. This is why I don't worry about it. Because if I put the club in the center, your shoulders and your hips will be lined up properly. So you, you picked your target. Yes. In your mind's eye, I guess. Right. And then you, then you centered that ball in the uh, center. Not the ball, the club. The club in the center, got See, your grip. That's right, and there are your shoulders. And then you move to it. That's right. That's the, and that's the way you play every shot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But see, that's the beauty of the center incision and the balance, because your, 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 your shoulders are already, without having to do anything about it, they're already square. Now suppose I want an open stance, okay? Now if I want an open stance, what's the definition of an open stance? Anybody? Just a retraction of the left foot. That's all. Yeah. See? So if I want an open stance, you see, I, I'll go up to my ball with an open stance. My club will still be in the middle, you see, but because my ball is in, uh, my club is in the middle, why are my shoulders like? Already square. See? So an open stance, you're not facing your body to the left of the target. No. You're just pulling Only it. if you wish to cut the shot. Target changes too. What do you mean your target changes? Your, your target now is more left of where you might have been. No. No, you still same same way. Place your blade way. towards. Arm. No, no, I mean your target out. If you want to cut the shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. when you cut. Oh, well, you cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. See, now it's very important that you understand the definition of an open stance because an open stance, the way most of you do it, make you slice. Because you open your shoulders. Because you open your foot, your feet. Your, your left foot, I should say, not your feet. See, if I fan my, now watch my shoulders now. Now let's say that I get the, I want to get my, my open stance the way a lot of people do, where I take my club and then set myself this way. Where are my shoulders? Open. They're open. It's in relationship to how much that foot opens. Right. It doesn't matter how much I open it. The moment I start this going, my shoulders go with it. Wherever, whichever position you have it. In other words, my perfect setup, let's say. If I were trying to, uh, to set up the ball absolutely perfect, the angle of my feet in relation to the target line should be the same. You understand what I'm saying? Repeat that again, Larry. If I had a perfect stance, and perfect balance stance. Now we don't because we're not built that way. Everybody's not built. See, when I walk to you, my left foot is a little bit this way and a little bit back. This is the way I'm built and the way I move. But if I were built in such a way that when I stop, that I would stop with the angle exactly the same to the target line. You look puzzled. Let me do it this way. Because that's the way you naturally stand, correct? No, you can have an open stance. Now, I play my little, little bitty shots with a very open stance.
What's the purpose? Explain. Well, it just gives you a little better feel to go into the target. But to keep your shoulders and your hips. Oh yeah, unless you want to cut it or fade it or or slice it, whatever. Now, if I had my 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 club there and I was lining up, see. Now, if I were perfect, and I'm sure you know we're not. You see, this would be to me the perfect setup, where the angle of that foot there and the angle of this foot should be the same. That's perfection. Okay. Now, if the angle is the same, what's going to happen up here? It's absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. But now, I'm built a little bit this way. As long as I don't disturb that, I still keep my shoulders fine because this is the way I'm built. But now when you get somebody that wants to get an open stance, see, and they get this way, can you see my shoulders? I mean, to hit the ball straight from this position, I would have to get myself over here. Very awkward. So you would just naturally swing outside in if you're like Yes. Like you would, everything would be going left and starting left. So you're saying that basically when you do pull your foot back, which is the correct way to open your stance, that you are saying that, right? Yes, I am. Well, it, it depends what you want to do, see. Now, if you want to hit the ball straight, this is the proper way, yes. Okay. And, and when you would pull your foot back in order and still want to hit the ball straight would be uh, just to make it a little bit simpler to clear your hips? Right. Bit. Right. It makes, it, it allows you, you see, w when you're doing this way, it, it's a little easier to face your target in the small stuff. Pardon, sir? You've got more room to bring your arms Exactly. To That's why it's easier stuff. It's easier to face in that direction. Because you're, when you open your stance, you're, you're pulling your left hip back. Out of the way. Out of the way. But your shoulders... Stay the same. Stay the That's same. why I can hit it straight. The way you had those clubs laid on the ground, you would just slide your foot out, out to the Exactly. Edge of the in club. that same angle, but retract it. And that doesn't bring your shoulder back. No. Strangely enough, it doesn't. Now watch. There's my center, okay? It brings your hips, though, doesn't it, or not? It, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't bother my shoulders. It doesn't, doesn't bother my shoulders at all. Whereas I can do just that much, and they go. Yes, sir. Now, uh, when you're at balance, you're talking about balance now. I know I've worked with John. We're supposed to have your weight evenly distributed. That's next. Have, That's, okay, next. That's next. That. Right. That's next. That's next. Does that, all this make sense to you now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I want to just one more time. Okay. Uh, even though I had the club in the center, yes, and I'm evenly distributed. Yes. If I fan out that left foot, yes, sir. There's nothing I can do. That shoulder's going to open. If you do nothing, I mean, you can restrict it. Yes, but I mean, if but I if you do nothing, if you just let the body respond to what you're doing, the moment that you open up, that's, it that's goes. The point I make. Regardless of whether I'm balanced, centered. Regardless, the moment that foot fans out, your shoulders go. So you've got to be sure that if you, if you want an open stance, that, that you just retract. And the angle of these feet in relation to the target line will still remain the same. Thank you. Now, if you're playing a little itty-bitty shot where the body is not involved, then you can do anything you like. OK? Now, if I were going to hit a ball to this gentleman right here and I wanted to hit it this way, you see, see, I can do that because the body's not involved. But notice what I did with my shoulders. I brought them back this way. But see, I couldn't play a big shot this way. See, I couldn't put myself there and, and hit a drive, for instance, or, or fade a shot or anything. It's very, it, it's impossible. See, but a little itty bitty shot, and sometimes you do this say, if you're in a bunker. Uh, not in a bunker, but just right next to the bunker, you haven't got enough room to place your feet. Okay, you put your feet this way because you can hold your balance, but then you turn around and keep your line held to target. Now, and now because the, the body is not involved, you can play the shot. But you could never do this on a big scale. Okay, and the same thing happens with a, with a, with a, a close stance. If you want to hook the ball and you want it to retract the right, you can't hook it from this position. You can only hook it from this one. Let's see. Any questions? Any confusion? I have one question. All right. About, we've already gone over the stance. I just when I take a stance, yes. my feet kind of go out like that. Wonderful. Is that okay? Yes, sir. As long as they're even. I know if, like, no, you don't want it that way. Okay, I've my feet like that. Come to me. Come over here. 
Stop. See? That's the way you should be. Okay? Now, why would you be built to walk like this and then spell a G or F and now have to be like that? See? You play as you are, my friend. You play as you are. If you were the kind of person that walked this way, when you address the ball, you address it that way because that's the way you're built and that's where you be the way you get your balance and so forth. I had a young lady that was a very good player, played pigeon toed. Great. Because that's the way she's built and she moves better from here than if I put her that way. A person that's built this way, you put her this way and you kill her. Very restrictive. Okay. So now we've got the club behind the ball and we're kind of square. Now why don't we want to hit the ball with the left arm and the club being an extension of each other which you hear all the time? You want the hands ahead of the ball. Why would we want the hands ahead of the ball? The left arm, and this goes back now again to, to your question about the weight, okay? Your left arm is an extension of your club or vice versa at impact time. But a lot of things have happened by that time. So that when you take the club to the top of the back and you get back to the ball, can you see that now it is an extension of it? But you can't start this way. And when I say to some of my colleagues, well, if you want to have this there at the beginning, why don't you start this way? Because that's your actual position. Oh, yeah, we can't do that. See, they take half of the thing and that ruins everything. Because now when I do this, what happens to my shoulders? They're opened up, aren't they? Do I want to start out this way? Now, if, if, if I want to do this, now I've got to do this. And you see some of the professionals who have a tendency to do that, they get themselves very cocked this way because it's the only way they can get lined up. But you've got to do both. You can't do just one. And I see no reason why you have to do this. Why can't we do it that way? And just leave it there. Exactly to the same position as club, you were at address. Not the body. The club, the club does. Because when, the, when you're swinging, your body is doing... There's no way you could go to that particular no. exact position when everything is moving. moving. That's correct. So when you come in this to the ball and, you, and you're this way, you see, now if I take this and move it away, isn't that my address position club-wise? So the club has returned exactly as it was, but I'm not because I'm responding to what? The, the speed, you see. The speed. I'm responding to the speed. I'm, with the uh, hand, it, can you show that with an offset club? It'll be pretty much the same. There's not that much of, you know, okay. they, don't, they don't offset that, that, that club that much that you, it, it's going to be very, very, they do more with putters than they do with, uh, so if with any club. Pings, it doesn't mean you no, 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 no. It, it will make maybe a little bit of difference, not much. Okay. Now, should I keep my weight on my right side? Should I keep it on my right side? Should I shift my weight going back and then try to shift it going forward? Not necessary. Not necessary. We're going again back to balance. If I'm trying to get back to the ball, think of this. What geometric figure are we making with the club head as we swing it? A it's a circle. In order to have a circle, what's the first thing you must establish? The center. the center. Okay? Now, if you're going to make a complete circle with a compass, okay, can you shift that center around and complete your circle? You can never return to your starting point, can you? Golf is just the same. If I take the club and put it in this position here, where's my center? Right there. What will happen when I go over here now? I must reestablish that center or I can't make contact. That takes time and extremely good coordination and a lot of practice. If I have my club here and I keep my weight and my center the same as, I am here, as I'm swinging the club back and it doesn't change, what are my chances of returning to the ball? All I have to do is just let it come back and it's there. I don't have to make an effort to come this way. Will, will you uh, do that again? I, wanna, I just want to look at something a second, please. Okay. Which one? The, right, the first one or the second one? The second one. The balanced one? The balanced one. Okay. That's kind of pointing here. It's not that I haven't the slightest idea where it's pointing. Okay. Now, you would you want it to point this way? 
Just ask No, no, I'm... I'm yeah, I would thought that's where it would be. Nicholas does. Nicholas does it. Okay. See? I would have a terrible time swinging the club with my knee this way. Okay, so it doesn't roll that way. It does. and, and you being shorter, you would have a terrible time too. I do. Yeah, you would. Yeah. See, because this point right here is making the circle just like the, like the hips are and everything else. See, it's making a circle. Now, some of us do more than others. See, if you watch my, my swing, from here down, I'm very stable. I don't get a lot of this kind of stuff. See, when I swing back, I, I'm much more this way than most people. Okay, because well, isn't it true that if the more flexible a person is, you know, the more their joints and neck can move, that the left, less of that left heel will have to lift? Yes, the absolutely. The when I was young and I was about... Uh, 18, 17, even younger than that. My members at the at the uh, country at the uh, lecture country club where my dad was always used to say, "But he doesn't even get their left heel off the ground." Unfortunately, I can't do that today because I'm I've got more girth. So now the heel has to come up to allow me to turn. See. So if a person wanted to work on flexibility in that and stretching those muscles and exercising and whatnot, it would be good to stretch yes. around. So you wouldn't have to do that much with your feet. That's right. There's no reason to do that. Now, as far as the knee position, you see, a lot has to do with the way your knees are built also. Now, if you have a person that has knees of this type, bow-legged, now, their, their reaction here is going to be much different than a person who's not kneed. you see? And this is where the stereotyping of body movement is so difficult, because you can't get two people to move the same way. Now, Nicholas goes this way, and he does it pretty well when he gets about three-quarters of the way back. Okay? Now, you watch some of the other fellows, they hardly move at all. Now, they're both successful. Now, which one is right? This one's right for Nicholas. This one's right for me. You see? So you can't stereotype those body motions. Height has a great deal to do with the way you appear and then what you do. You take a person who's short that swings with a flatter swing, you see, they'll get more of that feeling. You take a person who's very tall, they get more of that. Now, you see, I can't control that except by the way a person's built. Okay? It's really so, fundamental, the swing center here. Yes. It, I mean, oh, it's tremendously important. Up, and you can't move sideways. Can't move yeah, it's way. very important. But then if you consciously think of it... No, you can't do that. No. Restricted. Right. That's why you keep your weight equal. That's all you do. And when you... Are you a teacher? No, no. Okay. Well, if you help anybody, uh, be sure that when you're trying to keep a person centered, okay, you explain it, that the center has to be there, but working through their feet. People say, your head's moving. Well... If the head's going from right to left, what's the weight doing? It's going right to left. So what the best way to do it is to keep the weight equal. See, and then, you see, they can f stay free. If you tell them to keep this point there, they won't move. But can you really get, can you, can you really get the club in such a position without letting this move? I mean, no, no, you can't. That's why I said that. If you try to keep, if you tell a person, like for instance, when I'm teaching somebody and saying you've got to keep your center, many times they'll freeze this. The, that's why I work through the feet. I don't work through this point. I explain that this is the center. We're trying to keep it there, but we're doing it by keeping the weight equal. See? As long as I keep my weight equal, that point is not going to go over there, I guarantee you. But I can turn with it. But if I'm trying to keep this right there, then I'm going to be very restricted. So the way you go about it makes a big difference. So the, on, on a full swing on your feet, how much uh, weight is it, is it, would you say? I would say that the weight, from my standpoint, stays equal. As equal as you can keep it. On, at the top of your back, so yes. you have as much weight on your left foot as you Yes. Right. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, this couldn't stay there, could it? With a driver? Everything. Anything. But it changes Anything. position. Right? But a guy like Pardon? It changes position, the angle, the weight. Right? Oh, yeah. The weight shifts on your feet, but... But if you say like a guy, a guy like Curtis Strange there, for example... Well, like please don't take the tour players. So just forget that one. For this reason, the tour player can hit the ball on their heads. They can do anything. They play every day. They, they, I mean, they, they have this 24 hours a day in their hand. They can do anything. That's why Miller Barber can hit it. You couldn't hit it from there. I couldn't hit it from there. Miller Barber can't. Uh, you take uh, what, anybody that has a, a, a different type of swing. You take the, Eddie Fergal that take, takes the club up this way for whatever reason. Uh, we never want to compare the tour players to the principles of teaching the average player because they can do anything. Absolutely anything they want. You practice every day. You play every day. 
So you've got to do something that's got very basic fundamentals and be very stable. Now Crenshaw himself says that one of his basic problems is that he moves off the ball. Now he himself says that. So that should imply to all of you that you better not move off the ball. You see? So how can you keep from moving off the ball? Keep your weight equal. Now it's true that the weight shifts on your feet. Now if I have a, if I weigh 200 pounds, 100 pounds here, 100 pounds there, perfect balance, all right? I'm at the top of the swing. 100 pounds here, 100 pounds there, but it's not in the same place. Where is it? Now it's going to the inside of my left toe oh. and to the outside of my heel. See? Because your weight, the weight you have shifts on your feet diagonally. Now as you're going forward, now the weight shifts to this side and to the toe. Naturally, on the forward swing, you've got almost 100% over here. You see? But now, why does it shift? Yeah, the force that you're using pulls you that way. So naturally, when you go that way, you just let everything go, and it shifts. You don't shift it. Now, why can't you shift it? Get out of sync with the clubs. That's right. You would have to know at what time it starts shifting and at what rate. Now, who in the world would know that? You see what I'm getting at? It's just the same as when you're trying to make the, the pivot, for instance. People say, well, now you've got to turn your hips. How do I turn my hips? This way? Do I turn them that way? How do I turn them? That's right. But see, you don't turn them. Because you don't know. The hips do three things. They tilt, they turn, and they move. For instance, if I'm swinging forward, let's say, and they say, get your hip out of the way. Okay? Okay, now do I get my hip out of the way this way? Would that be correct? Do I get it that way? How do I get it out? No one can tell me that. Now the hips tilt, they move towards the target, and they turn. Now what percentage of each and at what period in the swing do they start to do that? Who knows? You see, so when you get involved with that, like this gentleman said, you're completely out of sync with the clock because you don't know when it starts, how what the rate is, you don't know. You see? And yet, if you don't do anything and you take the club from here and put it over here, it all takes place at the right time. Now your feeling in your body changes all the time. Now some days you may get this feeling, some days you get that. I mean, boy, you're going to get different shots just with those two motions. It's very difficult. Very difficult. Some days I know that when I swing the club, uh, I'm much more responsive than others. I still hit the ball okay, but sometimes I'll get myself this way where I have not responded with my lower part. Some days I'm very flexible on this. I hit the ball just as well, but now how can I control that difference? See, very difficult to do. That's why when you depend on everything with this thing, it takes care of everything, so you don't have to worry about that stuff. If you're going to be swinging to a finish, though, <clears throat> with your circular swing, yes. isn't that weight going to end up on your left side? Certainly. But you, so you're saying that through the impact zone is balanced. Though. Yes, up to impact. Up to impact. Because you see, this, you also, have to be here. This club must be in this position, as I showed you before. If I take the club to the top of my backswing, okay, and hit the ball, I've got to come back there. So you're balanced through that entire motion from the backswing. Right. If you, t if you check this point right here, it's in the same place it was when it started, isn't it? Exactly the same. That's how I can get this thing back to here. Now, if I come over here, now I've got to either wait to reestablish my center, or I've got to reestablish it as I'm getting there. And that's how little that, that takes a little doing. So there's not an imbalance from left side to right side until after impact. Right. Absolutely. Yes. All right. I have a tendency to want to lean back on my right side. Okay. Now, I think I'm finding a way to kind of feel that, but is there a check or a test sure. for that? Sure, sure. Just keep your weight equal. That's, a, that's the simplest thing. See, th this is the simplest thing to change because all you have to do is just stay there and move the club. See, But keep your weight. No, don't get rigid or anything like that, but just... You're saying you just have to feel that in your feet. Sure. You got your Be aware that it doesn't shift around. 